just a couple minutes behind today, and I'm sorry about that, but Hopefully this will hold the microphone out of uh, the tail end of the brush area. <laughs> I won't be tacking it all the time. start with continuing a little bit with the gun uh, well detailing out here I'll start this with uh, Gregor's been good morning how are you today hopefully we're no microphone issues out the gate like we had yesterday but you know we'll see Here we're just tidying up some of this uh, metallic. But I suppose where we could start, since you're here out the gate, is maybe with his face? Would you like to uh, start there, maybe? These skulls have been bothering me too. I'd like to get this some attention out the gate as well. And check one thing with the camera and then we'll get onto some flesh tones out real quick. so much about cameras right now uh, and one of these things is how uh, quick things blur in the background so for example if we are in focus here to read that this conforms to this ASTM yada yada that it's non-toxic so we brush lickers may do what we do you know Wolf Wraith good morning and then you don't want it to immediately blur into obscurity how far back can we go? That's about a full bottle's length beyond the miniature. So I think there for most, mo this scale is fine. The larger that field of in focus is, I've learned uh, the much brightness you need to bring or it will not, it won't show. Yes, yes. Ty Grainer, good morning. Things I didn't know I was going to know yesterday when I got up. So, this morning we're going to start off with uh, some flesh tones and I'm also going to get out some colors. We're going to work on some bone as well. So, I'm not sure what, Gregor's been, what color were you starting out with on your flesh tone? 
just a standard color, something. I like to start out with something a little darker. If I'm gonna use something out of a pot, something like this cardic flesh is pretty dark. I think that's always a nice. I'm sure Games Workshop or whatever every brand's got like a like a darker peachy color. Ferrisman says, Army Painter Elven Flesh. I think I went too light. My idea was to go light and then hit it with the sepia. Yeah. Um, so that technique works with some colors and not others. I don't know about flesh tones. For me, it's always been darker, go lighter. And so what I'm going to start with is this cardic flesh. And I'm going to... I'll use the top of this paint pot to demonstrate what, we, what I've got blending on my palette. So I'm just going to put some of this down on top of the thing. And then I'm going to use you know, my favorite color, which is the... Uh, this is just P3's Sanguine Base. It's a very purpley red. That's all it is. Very cold. About as cold as red can go before it's actually purple. This pot is actually about as empty as you can get before you don't get any paint. Look in there. Look at that. That is the look of a well-used paint. This is a very strong color, so this is going to be a dab will do you, right? So I'm going to clean my paintbrush off. Like I said, any any of these purple colors will do. I'm just going to take... I mean, you can see how little paint I have on the brush here. And I'm just going to add it in to my cardic flesh that has already started to dry on here. So bear with me as I grab a little bit more of each. The top of a paint pot does not con conduct itself well. And so this might not look like we've gotten much darker... Truthfully, it hasn't. I'm just going to add a little bit more of my shadow color in. And then here in a second, I'll show you what that cardic flesh looks like beside it. And here's our original color. So it really didn't get darkened down too much at all. But the idea is very sound that we'll be able to... Uh, have some kind of shadow color and so when you look at a face and we just so happen sadly not prepped enough to uh to really demonstrate on just yet but i have this model might in some way represent what you're working on right so if you look at a face like this you you have some anatomy and the insides of the eyes are going to be darker and you nailed that. The sides of the head are also going to be darker, but specifically around the temple. Tigrainer says, not much darker, but more live looking color for skin. Yeah, the important thing, Ty, I think that you're pointing out here is that you has to have red in it. If it doesn't have red, it doesn't have life. And that that's the difference between uh, a darker human skin uh, regardless of race you have more reds and purpley tones in it more mahogany browns in the skin always but never like what you lose are the greens and the blues those those are the other side so when you look at like blue and you start going warmer on the color wheel you get more life when you start from the blue and you start to go colder that's when things get weird. That's what, like when you get that jaundiced look, that yellow, the cold yellow, the the weird greens and blues. They, they're spooky. They look very, very bad because if you saw anybody of any race with those colors, they don't look good. They look, you need a doctor, you know? And so the, the quick and fast rules are you want more darkness in the eyes. You want it 
under the the chin and you want it in the temples and on these small faces there's no need to get into more than that because we don't have room for any more paint you know uh gregersman says and i think that's why mine looked that michael myers mask it was too stark and it was too actually dark like black almost um, I, th I think it was reading as, as almost black, if not actually black. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take... He's hooded, so I kinda, I'm kind of i sort of lucky in this respect. I'm going to take this darker tone that I just mixed up. An actual amount of my brush. And I'm going to take it into the sides of this hood. And I'm just going to paint the sides of his face. And then I'm going to take the actual cardic flesh. So here we've got no mix. I'm going to paint the middle. The nose, the lips. And we'll let that dry. And the thing that I'm lucky in here is that we don't really have a light source. So the only place that's going to be bright is right in the middle. Now, if we were going to paint her, it would be a very similar way. I don't know. Maybe we can... Maybe in some way I can get this to, to paint over no, um, no primer. Well, I maybe have a model here. Let's look at this gentleman then. He needs a face, and he's good to go. Also hooded. I've got a thing for the hoods. I don't know. So we're doing the same thing. We're taking the darker tone. I'm working along the sides. We'll take the brighter tone. Which, again, we haven't added any white to. And in the eye sockets, because he's got some solid eye sockets, I'm just going to take that pure dark tone. So we haven't added any of the cardic flesh to it, and it'll block in his eyes. And yeah, you're right. He doesn't, he doesn't look great. It's not, it's not great. But it is, it is going to read well as we layer onto it. And skin has so much orange in it. It's like a, it's like a weird thing. And as that dries, we take a little bit more of our brighter color. But what we're doing is, you you kind of want to pick the color that you want to layer into. Like you want it to eventually become that elven flesh color, and then you just take it back up to that tone. I don't know why that works better with flesh. And it doesn't work that well with, like... Like, it's hard to do that with white. It's hard to start dark and build up to pure white. But it works. Gallifier, good morning. Hope you are well as... Well as well. Yeah, hope you're doing all right, too. If you hear what sounds like a calamity... Um, I'm sure you can tell the back... Like, we're working on our house. Like, there's no trim around the door behind me. Kind of situation back here. And before we move the camera, you can see that there's like a door and some trim back behind me. My cat is on a table where we have like tools. Just miscellaneous stuff that I should probably put away. And he's just sniffing around up there. And so if it sounds like the earth is falling, that's just cat business. He know he's a professional. Christmas says, looks fine to me. I don't want the most amazing face in the world. I just want something that doesn't make me scared to paint. Uh... An unarmored model. Yeah, like something without a helmet. So, yeah, I'm talking a lot about just rules, right? So let's look at Sorsha here. Because not every face is going to look like this. Not a, Honestly, I can't paint like this on that scale. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You need something bigger. You need more room. So, like, she's the size of my thumbnail, whereas this thing's the size of her freaking nose, right? Like her nose-to-mouth area. But, so when you look at it, 
many hours of effort, two minutes. So the rules still apply. Where we're gonna take our darker tones is we're gonna put them underneath the cheekbone, right? And on the sides of the face. We're gonna bring, we want people to look at the eyes. So this is the rule, okay? We want them to look at her eyes because they're the most important part. That's actually the thing that you can't mess up. The skin can be whatever tones they need to be, uh, as long as it's not like you showed a picture of an actor or actress and you're like, this is now going to be this person. Now people can judge, did you hit the mark or not? But ignore that. You're painting a hero in a fantasy game and it's super, super small. The only things that really matter are, do the eyes point the right direction? And do they look human? So by grabbing a, a human kind of flesh tone, like your elvish flesh, uh, we can do something all right. So let's go back to our space marine and see if he's dried enough to work with. So we have kind of a fun illusion. This is just something you can do with the hoods because when we look at, let me, this silly little sword gets in the way, huh? But you can see how much darker he is on the sides of the face. And the only thing that really is easy to see is right down the middle. Buddy, come on. Okay. Kittens. So here we're going to take more of our initial tone, the uh, that cardic flesh. And I'm going to start with his chin. And then we're going to work our way up to the nose. And now the rules here are you would have greenish tones down in the beard area. And you would have, or like blue tones, blue or green, whatever you want to go with. And then you'd work your way more red as you get into the cheeks, the nose, this, this brow area. And once you get up here, you get more blue and green again. And it also fades like from a three-dimensional thing the further away from the the nose and the cheekbones and you go back we're not worrying about all that this is like you look at a picture you can do all this study that that doesn't matter at this point we're just trying to get a nice neutral tone where the viewer can see it that will read well at like a, a matchstick head uh size which is what we're talking about here so for you gregersman you've laid down uh a nice skin tone that i think we just had a little too much white in. I think if you took your initial elvish flesh, glaze that back, and wash over that thing, it'll bring that life back in. And then what I would do instead of washing, uh, like soaking the entire head in that wash, that sepia, I would mix that together with your flesh tone and make a shadow color. Either use a purple or use that sepia, whatever makes sense to you. And... Uh, as long as it's a reddish purple. And then, little girl cat, come here. This is another cat now, I have two cats. Come here, are you coming up? No, she's not coming up. You have a visitor. But yeah, that, that would be my idea. If you if you glazed back that some of that original skin tone, It'll still add, if you get it glazed back enough, you'll get a nice transition. Uh, you won't just blow out all the work you've already done. It should in some, no kitten, no tails. Go watch it. No, that's my camera, you can't play with that. Come on, you need to settle if you're gonna stay. We're on cat time now. All right. Good girl. No, no, there can be no nuzzles. Yep, that's right. They get in a mood, I tell you. Cats are interesting because they're like, they're super metal. Like they're hardcore little, little murder savages. Like the little death machines, right? But we keep them locked up in our house because they're cute and fluffy. And sometimes they want to snuggle. <laughs> I don't know. 
But, uh, but yeah, that's the quick and fast rules with the face. I would, for you, glaze back some of that original tone. Thin, right? Um, let me get some, uh, get untangled with the cable. Get a little bit of water here, a little bit of this flesh tone. Let me see where we're at here. See how, there we go. See how we're pulled up on my finger here? It's too much paint. Here's the ticket. Take some paper towel, and you let you let it absorb most of it. Okay, so we don't have a bunch of paint in the brush, and then now we're controlled with it. Now you can't tell that it's actually depositing it on my finger. That's the real ticket when you're glazing something. I bet you it'll show up on his face. You see how dark his his eyebrow and nose is. I'm just gonna like, this is like stippling. I'm just tap, tap, tapping this onto his face. But you can see that it's turning wet. Like, and that's what you need to do. You just need to start with that. You can be heavier handed than I'm being, but the idea of being more controlled isn't going to do you any disservice. Quick injection says, did you just say, pull my finger? Good morning, everyone. <gasps> that cat has hands. Little girl, if you had hands, I'd be scared for my life. How have you been, Jix? Making any good progress on that chonky boy you were working on the other day? Cat with thumbs. There are cats with thumbs. I forget what it's called. Um, goodness. Uh, Hemingway was a big fan of uh, cats. He thought they brought good luck. And he, he really, especially he liked the ones that had the thumbs. Uh, there's a name for it. And he collected them. If you ever go visit his, uh, his estate, there's a boatload of cats there. And they do have thumbs. I think she might actually settle down now. We can get some painting done. Polydactyl. That might be the term. That sounds right, at least. Anything with a... Cats already all pretty much have thumbs. Like, you can see that they have a little thing in there that's thumb-like. No, babies, go. Come on down. If you're gonna... You can't get into the palette. Tell you right now, it's not gonna happen. Cat access denied. She was very, she's very happy at the idea of getting into the uh, the paint, and she just started purring. Like the like the very thought of her being bad. Grainer says some be some breeds are more prone to it than others. It's a need uh, attribute, though. Okay, so like if they're in an area with a lot of doors, <laughs> they start to develop thumbs. No, no cat on the table. Cat. Baby girl, that's coffee. You can't have the coffee. It's not for kittens. And that's paint water. That's not even... I'm not... No. Goodbye. The Iron Bandit. We got Mikey RR. We got MP89 says Siege. Wait, Siege. Do we get? There's no raid. 
Yes, she is. I don't know. She wanted to visit for a little bit, I guess. And Gregor's men, I'm sure. Have you been in here gluing bolters? Look, we're blowing up today. We've got everybody in here. We can get, like, I don't know if you've been in here when I mix up my own flesh tones, but, like, there's a ton of colors in skin. We don't need to get into all of this. Uh, no raid. I just yell siege when I do. Well, MP, you get... You cause concern. All right. A little concern. Um, you don't have to get into all this super high-end artistic stuff when you consider, am I going to paint a flesh tone? But the rules are just there. I should have grabbed this thing from the gate. Because it's a big pile of flesh. But like, the temples are where you want the darker tones. So when you think about, am I going to wash with something, whether it be sepia or something else, temples are where it goes. His temples should technically be darker. The better, every time you, like if you were to talk to a, a somebody that's more professional, they would say, hey, get, pick up your contrast here. More dark in the shadow, more highlight on the top. Like, okay. Vampire Gandhi indeed, Mikey. That's correct. Um, Tigrainer said earlier, my friend's cat used to casually pick up pencils in her hand and gnaw on them. Cats terrify me, man. Like if they if they were just a little bit bigger, I think they could make a run for the house. Like uh, Mikey says, my Tommy cat is getting a microchip cat door next week. That's fun. Come and go as they please. Tigrana said, we get a small bonus from work, so I think I'll check my local hobby shop and see if they have adequate supplies to try my hand at minis. Oh, that's fun. What do you think about picking up? Uh, Big Bay Beardo rolling in like, hey. Beardo, have you seen that I have an A uh, emote? Let me do it. Let me do it. I never get to send them. No, that's the wrong one. That's not the right one. Get out of here. But yeah. Let me actually put some paint on this thing. Tigrin says, I need to mix things up a bit from digital 2D. That makes sense. Uh, Tigrin says, I should ask, are there certain types or brands of paint to stay away from? No, there are not. Well, perhaps. Here's my advice. And everybody, everybody asks this question. It's not really everybody. But anybody getting into the hobby... Everyone wants to talk about paint. They want to talk about colors. It's true they're important, but while I'm mixing up some colors to do some uh, some bones, I will say you have... I don't know. Are you in the States, Tigran? Are you in the EU? Where are you rolling from? Iron Pan says Apple Barrel. Eric Smith says a big pile of flesh, and now I'm going to have nightmares. Sorry about that. I'm making sure we're all caught up. Tigrana says to MP, how I like how much freedom there is in Chaos Marine designs. Yes, yeah, but I'm a sucker for some of the iconic iconography. Iconography? Uh, in normal Marines. I get you. Iron Bane says Apple Barrel. Now I understand the paint. Hexneg Rowan says, hey, Nomadic, how's life? I'm doing all right. We're feeling good. Tigrana says, I'm in Alaska, so might as well not be the States. And P says, well, I would personally stay away from the new Primaris Marines. Okay. Uh, and Hexnex says, is your camera a bit different today or is it just me? This, yeah, we got we moved the camera. We got a different angle for this. You know what it is with that. Um, so Citadel. This is the brand of paint that Games Workshop provides. Citadel is... Probably the most expensive per ounce paint you can possibly buy. You don't get much. The colors are, the paint quality is exceptional. The paint pot is uh, a pile of dog poop. It's poop. Um, 
but the paint's good. You will pay the most for Citadel per ounce of any of the paints. Privateer Press, Formula P3, incredible paint, unique colors. You will not find their colors uh, matched by any other company. They do their own thing. That's why you will see their paints on a lot of uh, pro desks. I like the Formula P3 paints. Again, good. Their paint pot, not as poopy. There's no way we would have made it this far with a Citadel pot. This thing would have been had to have been chucked because it would have dried out. The other part says P3 are lovely. They absolutely are. AK Interactive. They make great paint. The price isn't terrible. The paint is good. Some of these paints that I'm going to show you pay more for for the container, but you get more paint out of them, so it's like you're, you're getting more. Vallejo. Excellent paint. The droppers are great. They're not infallible, but they're good. And pieces to go by what my stores carry, and that's a good point. I have a ton of Vallejo because that's what was carried locally. I have very little Reaper. Reaper, very good. Their MSP line, they make great colors. Uh, just not readily available around me. And so I have colors I wanted to do. Like, for example, maybe I looked something up that an artist did. And I thought, I want to try and do exactly that. So maybe I pick up those colors. Those are the, uh, the Reaper paints that I have. Um... I think that concludes the... Uh, I have some secret weapon stuff, like some smaller shop paints, but uh, they're all fine. They're all fine. And they're going to interact a little differently uh, on the palette, but for the most part, they're all the same. There's it, What matters is what medium is it. Is it, a, is it a normal matted or satin paint medium, or is it a gel? And that's, that'll determine how it reacts. Gregorsman says, P3 pots still aren't the best, though, if you ask me. They're not, Gregorsman. They're not the best. They are... What they are not are they are not uh, designed to be uh, crap. They're not designed to give you a headache and to get your paints to dry out. That's, that's what they are. They aren't. You know, they're not that. And for that, they get two points. I know the points don't matter. Um, MP says, I go by what my stores carry, and I hate Reaper paints. What don't you like about them? You don't like them. They're a little bit thinner than other other brands, but I don't think that they're hate-worthy. But uh, Tigrana says, this is very informative. Are these all acrylic? Do I have to worry about some types not adhering to others? So this is all acrylic. AK, actually the one I specifically showed, is an enamel color. So when you start getting into AK or Tamiya, that's when you start getting into more alcohol-based paints. Still good, but they will, they're will they not water-based, and so they will consume uh, other, other paints and they'll damage. So we got the Dungeon Master Painter. Good morning. Welcome in. We're talking paint. Um, Kettlefire says, I started with a small set of P3, which had coal black in it. Love coal black. Uh, I love them and have about 50% of my collection. Yeah, they make great paint. Now, a large portion of my collection is actual uh, art supply stuff. Go down to the hobby or the uh, actual craft store. Thank you for that host, Dungeon Masters. Hello. Almost good night for me. There you go. You're on the other end. Yeah, I'm getting up starting for the day. You're you're rolling out, huh? Califier says that special weathering effect, though, from the AK. The one that I showed specifically, yes. Um, titanium white is you know super bright white but this is just a heavy bodied tube paint from golden acrylic liquitex makes the same windsor newton has some mostly they do oil but they have acrylic raw umber different different colors with a different medium now these react very very differently they're super thick but they're also very translucent it's weird i love them i love them a lot now these are probably the most bang for your buck you might pay 13 to 20 dollars for a tube of this but you're getting two ounces you know you get a ton of paint as opposed to these little i mean how much paint even comes in a citadel pot do they even tell you 0.4 fluid ounces so you're gonna pay close to five dollars 
for a quarter ounce of uh, paint. Where I think two ounces here cost me eight dollars. You know, some of the pigments cost a lot. Some of the pigments can be very expensive, but they go a very long way. Um, Big Bad Beardo says it's hard for me in the UK as the only ones around me are Citadel. Anyone know any cheap alternatives that are better, if not equivalent? Uh, anything by Vallejo. They're, they've got an airbrush line. They've got their their game color line is all the old traditional fantasy colors. You also might have access to Scale 75. They're super matte, but the colors are very, very well loved. They do a good job. Not something that I have very much experience with where I live because over here it's a very foreign thing. Mikey says you broke down the tube paints to the same consistency you have more like five or six fluid ounces. I agree, Mikey. That's why I think they last so long. And they're much closer to pure pigments. Here's another thing I use a lot of, uh, ink. These are these are very much pure pigment. The Liquitex brand, there's De La Rowney, the, a bunch of brands. But it's acrylic ink. That's what you're after. On off, on off, on off, on off, on off. What, what is his name? Good morning. Welcome in. How are you? But yeah, that's the thing. Uh, all the brands are good in their own ways, and they all have their drawbacks. Like P3, yeah, I wish it was a dropper bottle. There it is. It just might not be at the local shop, right, Gloom Bolters? They say there's plenty in the UK if you look around. Dungeon Master says I need to get me some inks yeah I, I i love that's actually technically speaking that's how we did this red armor so in painting uh sorcia here we took uh a, a dark red so much darker than i wanted the color to be and then we built it up to like a peachy flesh skin tone gal um sorry gregorsman think like how bright your uh, your flesh tone is on the face you were just painting that's how bright we brought this red it didn't look good. It looked bad. Like, we ruined it. But then we took a drop of red ink and watered it back like a bunch. It was basically tinted water. And then glazed and glazed and glazed and glazed until it tinted, it pigmented the whole thing in a uniform way. Made this beautiful, buttery, smooth uh, red armor. And that's what inks can do. They are, they are very dense pigment that you can use differently than maybe other other things. I'm also noticing that Dreitz's claws catch in the frame. I, I'm i happy with it. <laughs> Usually I'm not happy with things I paint and I sit there and twiddle with it. Um, making sure I'm not missing anybody. Gallifier says, nice, need to use the Liquitex stuff, looks interesting. Yeah, Liquitex is good. Uh, here's the thing, I actually prefer the Daler Rowney for the value, like Daler Rowney, you you pay a little bit more, but you get quite a bit more uh, in the pot. So like, this would be better for me. The problem is, it's it's so big, right? But the Liquitex ones will fit on my paint rack. Like the Liquitex guys aren't any bigger. They're not much bigger than the Vallejos, right? So I use a nail polish rack, and they'll just set on it. And so for me, that was the deciding factor. That's why uh, I've started collecting more and more uh, Liquitex. Even though they are, you know, 30 mil in a bottle as opposed to... What do we have here? No! Look at that! Also 30 mil. No crap! Well, never mind. Blew my mind. Beauty of engineering, right? Same size bottle. Good on Liquitex. If anybody is in here that was here from the old days, you may have noticed when I had my green mat, there's a nice brown puddle in the middle of it. It was this. One of my favorite colors, Burnt Sienna. A gorgeous reddish brown. And the bulk of this was spilled. Funny. Uh, 
Big Bad Beardo says, I'll check them out. Thank you, Gallifier. Who's Gallifier? Nice, never use the liquid text. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. 21202, I think. Nice dungeon master. Um, Gallifier says, lovely armor. Thank you for the compliment. Gloom Boulder says to the Beardo, Wayland Games have Vallejo and scale color. You can get Vallejo sets on Amazon. There you go. We got Jan hopping in here. Good morning, Jan. How are you now? Let's continue with this. While we're chatting. Dungeon Master says, Question, do you have any tips for taking the next step from tabletop ready to competition level or the next step? Well, Dungeon Master, there's, there's a lot of things when it comes to that. And... Jan would actually be a good person to add some insight to this because Jan paints at a very high level. Um, for me, I try to paint the same way regardless of what I'm painting. I paint in the same way that I would for a tabletop as I would for a display. The difference is just sort of when do I stop, right? So, Source's Armor here. We talked about how long it took for me to go through here with my paintbrush and smoothly blend all this stuff for competition. One thing that happens is you choose your highlights for how you want the person to look at the model. So, like, things might drop off here to the side, but that's okay because you want, you're, you're making them take, like, a photo from here. When you think about a tabletop... It shouldn't be that it's a lesser quality. It means that certain details aren't going to be brought up, you know, to a microscopic level. We got to get it to read at three to seven feet. Like, can we get our models to look good across the table for a game? And can we do it in a tidy enough way that if somebody picks it up, it's not a coyote ugly scenario? Um, so here, for example, is another kind of red. This I did all with the airbrush. Some tidy up needs to be done. This took no time. I did a squad of these guys to this point in probably 20 minutes or a half an hour. Most of that was fiddling with where I wanted the highlights to be on the non-metallic. But like, you, this guy will pop off the table. He's a vi very, very vibrant red. Now, it's like the Chrysler 300 and the Phantom. If the Phantom rolls up, you're going to know the difference. But if the Phantom's at home in the display case, no one's a wiser. And so it's just a matter of doing things like that, like having that understanding. To me, I try to paint the same way every time, but building that foundation. So it's like when I'm working on tabletop models, it's like if a, if a display model is like we're counting to 10, I'm counting to like three, four. Yes, Mikey, this is a war machine. Um, Every time I'm painting a model, it's just like occasionally we add like go five, six, seven. Like we start working up details. We start punching up contrast. And truthfully, it's an experiment. I don't know if Jan can attest to this, but like for me, when I start working more details or try to take something to the to like a display level, I'm doing things that I don't know if it's going to work. I'm following a, a loose rule set that I've seen success out of before, but... I mean, I rarely nail it in one go. I put it down, we start, do a little back and forth, and then things work out. Does, making sure we didn't miss anything. Yeah, Dungeon Master says, right now, I only take things to a tabletop ready, and I'm working on trying to get things to display level. I hear that. Um, the thing that we, I mean, to have like an actual, and to add meaning to any of this, we would have to look at some of your art so if you wanted to we're very link friendly uh click a link up we have a look and i can at least in some way add something of meaning to what you're talking about trying to do can maybe add like techniques are all time you know everybody in here anybody that wants to take the time to learn how to do uh, a technique and replicate something they see that's all that is is time um some things take a little more understanding and so the idea that you know you maybe don't start that with until you have some extended hours with the brush uh my discord is subscriber only it's like their perk but in here is fine or dm to me is fine
definitely too bright. Yeah, <laughs> Dungeon Master with a sub. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, the the tabletop standard thing is is weird because it you know you look at different artists and you're gonna get distraught at like what their tabletop standard is. It's like a weird thing that has no no caliber. Like this is a tabletop model. This is going to amp services. Drycha over here with her non-metallic thingies. She's going to a tabletop. Sorsha, that was display. You know, it's just it's just about how long do you work on something before you put it down to me. You subscribe in the moment, I suppose we ought to get you a Discord link, huh? Today I really want to work, once I get this gun to a better place, I want to work on, uh, uh, I don't even know what the term is, um, this free hand, I gotta I got make a, an adjustment to it, it's not good. Go dungeon master. All right. Dragonborn fighter I recently painted. Okay, so you're working the very degree. You're working on your cloak. You got highlights. You got shadows. You're you're washing back. Yeah, so the next thing that I would say technique-wise that you work on from, from washing back models like that is you start trying to understand light a little bit and you start to, to glaze more than you're washing the entire piece. I would say that that's added to the description. That happens. It was just the copy pasta. Um... Yeah, that would be my initial my initial go is like let me let me get back over here. And we can go into more depth on things like that down the road here in Discord. But when you look at his robes, uh, you can see like we've got make sure that would really bum me out if I had something still on the brush. You see these ripples, right? And we have highlighted areas. The thing is those highlights aren't just going to be everywhere. Even if it's a raised edge or a lower ripple. Like out here, even though we have these recesses, we're still highlighted the whole way. Like brightness goes into the shadows where there's, where there's a light pocket. But even where there's a raised edge up here, it's going to be shaded. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Expertise on the armor is nice. Yeah, that, that vertigree. And verdigree is like the kind of thing where you can say like, okay, I took the the verdigree glaze, right? I watered it back and I and I washed it across the thing and maybe did some highlighting afterwards. And then there's the part where you do the verdigree freehand and you layer it up. And it's just a matter of what are you trying to get out of it and do you want to start practicing a technique? We got Kalini in here. Good morning. And so, like, that's the next thing, is when you take things that are more automatic, like totally washing the model, totally highlighting an entire, like, a raised edge the whole way, and start to think, is this in shadow? Or, like, start looking at volumes and, and more spheres and triangles. Like I said, uh, later on in the Discord, we can go over that in more uh, more depth. Because we, we could lose a couple days on that subject. Kalini, how are you today?
Lady's doing well. That's good. Galifar says, good lord, I love that Eldritch Horror Mini. That's awesome. Anybody says, I'm 100% ready to practice new techniques. I've recently been working on some object source lighting. Okay, very cool. Complex subject, that is. And uh, that's also a finishing technique. Uh, I wouldn't get lost too much in that. Like, for sure, practice it. But, like, here's the thing to understand about that. Some people get worried, like, oh, I can't do object source lighting. The reality is it's totally dependent on the paint beneath it. So don't don't sweat it if things aren't coming out the way you want. Uh, Dungeon Master says, thank you, Gallifier. I, it was lots of fun to paint. That's always important, right? Like, you can really tell when somebody's enjoyed what they're working on. Here we're just working more and more opaque black into our metallic color here, taking a little bit of the edge off the color and uh, and the shine. Because we want that, but we also don't want it to look like it's super glamorous. It is the 41st century. here and then we can start to in some way bring it back little by little where we want it to be so perhaps up here right here up this corner we can do that like the whole way right like add that nice bright highlight up to the top I think that's a step a lot of people miss with the metallics in general it's like the idea that you can uh, control how shiny they are. Just gotta get a little bit more for my mix. Let me get some of this laid in and then back to the chat hmm. all right Tigrano says before I run off to bed it's 2 30 in the morning here uh, mind if I link an early whip for a tyranid piece maybe get some early feedback from people absolutely share it up yeah if anybody in here has any of their art that they would like to share I um, can't always sit and take the time for feedback, but uh, <clears throat> happy to take a look. Anybody that's in the subscriber discord, we're happy to take looks. We do more feedback there. I can in some ways demonstrate things in chat, but God, this line bugs me. I'm thinking about just matching the weight of it across the whole thing, like just thicken the whole area. And then maybe I will do like a filigree, like a little gold, little something. Maybe bronze. I don't know. But it can't, it can't stand the way it is. Dungeon Master says, yeah, I've been repainting a table with a candle, just trying to get somewhat of a grasp on the technique. Some complex ones. Long link incoming. Oh, wow. 2D stuff fascinates me. Because I, I can't do it. I like that how vibrant that magenta is. I don't have a constructive thing to add to that because it's not something I would know how to how to change correctively, correctively uh, in a correct way.
trying to get even out the weight. Uh, Tigrana says, oh, the Tyranid color scheme is actually based on my friend's army. Yeah, if you can get that magenta or your friend can get that magenta as bright as that, oh, that'll pop. That'll be a nice looking army on the table. Tajibai says, well, I need to get some sleep. I have a lot to do tomorrow. It's 4.30. Well, it is 6.30 where I'm at, so you you get some rest. Um, yeah, we can chat more about different techniques and things that, that go on as... Uh, you know, throughout the day after you get some rest. Ty Grainer, do you ever do any, uh, like, advanced, like, atmospheric lighting? Because of that vibrant magenta, it would be pretty cool if there's, like, a... To do some color theory, like some really vibrant green light coming out of like that cave as like some kind of source light that was blasting up the back of the cave. But yeah, Dungeon Master. Now for rest later, for feedback, critique, and we can go over different techniques and such. That's no problem. Just amping up the weight on this line. Very nerve wracking. Greener says, yeah, I can do different lighting schemes. There will be some added light source to help things pop. It's pretty early. It's a long ways to go. Yeah, it, I mean, you're still sketched in for most of the background. It's one of those things when I show off a model or something, someone will want to give some feedback. Like, I need to see more before. It's like, all right. Because the thing they might be picking over might be just be more rough than I uh, than I thought it was at the time and like I start getting some more work done I define it on my own All right, let's continue this again we're just adding more and more shine as we work our way north we can in some way get closer to the uh, the metallic we're using up top. When we find it, we can take our black tone and then clean up our details. Oh, way too much paint, huh? That's what happens when you don't check it on the paper towel first. Just flood the flood the detail. Maybe I'll do this this little pistol grip down here. Hit that with some brown. Maybe make it a little wooden. That might be something nice. Uh, Ty Grainer says, yeah, the biggest thing... Oh, Gallifier, I'll get that link too. Hang on. Got a bunch to catch up on. Gallifier says, I'm working on this. We got an Instagram link. Ty Grainer says, the biggest thing 
I have been looking for on the 40k stuff is making sure I'm not messing up the rules of the universe too much. I ask questions all of the time when it comes to things like that. Um, like, at this one point I had a psychic hood sketch on Ultramarine because I didn't know that was just, you know, it looked cool. There it is. You're doing something very specific. Ooh, Gallifire. Is that a Kingdom Death? Yeah. Their models are so lively. That's wicked cool. Am I seeing some whiskey down there? I think I am. I get on my phone here in a little bit. I'll kick you some likes out on that stuff. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Lippin91 says... Exactly what I was looking for. May I ask a question? Please do. Ask questions. Share art. That's what we do in here. Um, I like that Gallifier. The Iron Bandit says the Tigraner. Yeah. Rowboat, girly man, and the Smurfs would be would not be pleased. Can't wait to see the progress of Tigraner. She seems to be missing most of her skirt, though. That's... That's how they do with the uh, with the uh, Kingdom Death. Got a lazy panda hopping in here. Good morning. How are you? Tigrana says, I have to say, out of all the info I've binged on 40K, all of the nicknames for the Smurf King just crack me up the most. <laughs> Hashtag Smurf Lord. Lazy Panda's been a minute. When the original Lazy Panda was in here when we had no just nothing. I was barely working off a webcam. Lippin says I have a 3D printer which I print stuff with PLA plastic, mostly light gray. Can I use any acrylic paint as a primer and how do I get good rust effect Libin, are you in the states Gallifrey says thanks Tigrainer hopefully over the weekend there you go Sweden uh, there's a company here in the US called Badger and they make airbrush supplies and they've recently made a, uh, a 3D printer friendly primer but I would definitely start with a with a primer. I don't know a lot about techniques for getting that kind of like the non-resin printers to be smooth. And I know that there are certain techniques you can utilize to take some of that grit out of it. Iron Bandit says to Ty Grainer, if you want a model chapter of Spesmarine, check out the Angry Marines chapter. It's funny. All right. I think that's going to make this quite a bit. Quite a bit more legible for me. Perhaps I won't be so enraged by its presence. Checking out some paints right quick. Dino says, Steinal Res primers are pretty much the gold standard for airbrush on primer. Yeah. Um, the other thing that they put out was like a 3D printer friendly. Um, it was a kind of mixture for gap and pit filling. Um, I have never used it. I, I just know that their other products are super nice and they come well recommended. It says, could I say use titanium white as a primer? far as I understand, primer is just ground layer of any paint, or is it something specific? Well, it depends on how you paint. Um, all pigments react differently to the undercoating. So, uh, do I have anything primed? Uh, I do. I do. So when we look at something like this, that is mostly primer, we're trying to establish a point of view for our viewer. Primer is effectively something for the paint to stick to. 
I usually would say go with something dark. But uh, whenever we build up to a bright light, and then you can you can pocket that. But like, I guess it doesn't matter if you're coloring it. You just have to understand that colors are going to look darker, more desaturated over darker tones, and then brighter over top of the others. Lazy Panda says, remember the giveaway of one a while ago? Yeah, Lazy Panda was our first giveaway winner. Him and uh, them and damn it, Daniel. Uh, this is back before all the shipping issues started. I could not. I kept getting packages returned. I had to send Daniel's and Panda's gifts out. I think on three different occasions, and it took it took several weeks before they would come back to me. Uh, my post office must have lost it because I remembered about it last week. You never got yours. What? Panda, DM me. I will send you something. I it it never came back to me again. And Daniel got his. I assumed we were good with that. We'll square you away. I've got to hit the post office today anyhow. It it, it hurts in my in my fibers. I'll send you some pictures of things that I have, and uh, we'll get you squared. Um. Lippin says, "All right, that makes sense. Much of prish. Yeah, there's different things. I would not use." high quality paint as just the primer titanium white makes an excellent highlight on top of for example a black so a lot of times like i just showed you a model that was pre-shaded here we go so this is black with regular white painted over top of it and just pocketed it over her her face and the reason we know that this is not titanium white is because my camera's not blowing it out if it was titanium white it would get too too bright but then on a bust or something, we might come back with like a titanium white ink and then further brighten up the faces. I don't know that I would do that uh, over the horse of a whole model, but I also don't know that it's a problem. It's just like, would I take the time kind of question. I don't know. I've never tried it. Lazy Panda says, I waited for a while and I had work, so I've been so busy I've been asked about it, and I st still haven't got it at all. Huh. Yeah, that was so crazy. I set up a, uh, a Stamps.com account, which is our postal service, so I can send packages from my home. But I had to fill out all kind of international paperwork for it. It would not... I don't know. Genuine Vision says, A primer is more than just a base color. The primer paint I is usually quite matte with ever so slightly rough texture so it's not only to cover the model but to give uh, to give it a basic color but also to add uh, also and very importantly to give the paint to come after your colors and layers something to cling on to without a primer the paint who who will then use the paint the mini can what are we saying here? Can bead and not adhere smoothly. Also, they would be then be more prone to chipping and flecking off if they aren't gripping to the mini. Uh, Jan's absolutely correct. Primer tends to have a strong adherence. Titanium white as a color is not necessarily a problem so long as it is a primer. Let me say, I don't really have the option to use sprays, so I'm painting with a uh, manual brush and acrylic paint in tubes. If you're going to handle your model, uh, the better primer is always going to be better for the longevity of the miniature. Um, I prefer vinyl primers myself. The Badger Steinal Res or Vallejo's vinyl um, model primer. They're both excellent. Lippin says... TLDR, use primer, tis important. Iron Bandit says, similar to adhesion promoter, absolutely bandit. I imagine, I might need to see what an adhesion promoter is, but I feel like that's something that's got a lot of bite to it. Um, Lippin says, directly from the painter, unless I sand it. Lazy Panda says, damn, I got to go, my CPU is on its, on its way, and I need to sign for it as well, as need to finish my work before it comes. Well, Panda... I will get a hold of you today. I had no idea, and I feel 
smaller than this little guy I've been painting. Makes me feel terrible. Galavar says, I like the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer gray or white rattle cam. Yeah, I like to go uh, black primer and then build up off of that. But if I had a like an army that was all one color, I might find like a dark muted tone of what I was going to work on and just blast the whole thing. To me, it makes great paint. Uh, the limited line, but their whites and grays are super, super cool. Speaking of which, to me, a flat white is incredible. I think it might be, in some ways, if you're talking about airbrushing, I think it's better than, uh, than the uh, Liquitex ink. But I don't know. Hey everybody, we got the King and King Beard in here. If anybody's interested in helping out a new streamer, they are trying to get their everything up and running, and and could benefit from a few follows. I know they're free. They do not paint, but they definitely get their uh, get their video game on. So, if you want to, there's a streamer you could hook up. I know it's not a partner push; it's an affiliate push, but. Sometimes that gap can be harder to bridge than, than we remember. So, Lippin says, I do trial and error on some trash models. See if I can get a good result. There you go. Hellfire says, Games Workshop do specific colored spray cans. Yeah. the those, I'll tell you what, though. Those GW rattle cans can be a real bear uh, on, the, on the wallet. Just stood up, she slipped down. Thank you, Gallifier. Yeah, Iron Bank gotta start somewhere. That's true. Don't we all? No, this isn't going to read well. This uh, particular chest piece here, the plastic is not very strong. Super, like, whenever a sculpt is soft, you're kind of playing a freehand game anyhow. says damn you got some sick painted models on your insta awesome job well thank you yeah i should probably promote that thing while i'm in here but yeah it's down below we got a patreon we got some merch we've got what else do we got we got instagram that's where i do most of it on the old gram oh no excuse me this uh I really wish this was a crisper sculpt, but we're gonna just draw our own details, huh? Let me get some get a brightness red up. So 
sometimes pink is the answer. Let's see what we can do here. Oh yeah, that's starting to brighten up. And because these are a little bit kind of rubbery, we're gonna have to draw our own feathers in. Everybody that's kicked uh, King Beer to follow there. I know they're trying to get everything grinding. Lippin 91 with the follow. Now, thank you so much for that. You know, we get that corgi wiggling. Sir Snuffleus says, thanks for the, for the tips. Some days ago on we were uh, on were to layer highlight with shadows really helped. Oh, well, glad we could help. In here, dropping the the infos, and Sir Sir Snoofless, <laughs> thank you, thank you for the name and the follow. I should have probably got some more of this highlight color out. It's one of those things you gotta get get enough to make the paint go. So you said we we're talking about uh, where to layer highlight with shadows and really help. What were we? What were you working on? And do you have any examples of your your results? We could have a look at. It's always nice to see what people are working on. You know. I think that's going to have to be what it is. That's just very wet still, so we're going to leave that alone for a little while. Um, I don't know what the right answer is with this. Let me grab a different color here. Giving up the ghost. Oh no. Spooky name. Thank you so much for that follow. Good morning. Welcome on in. How are you today? Just working on picking out some details and honestly mostly today is just in chat. I've got very little in the way of actual productive paint done, but sometimes sometimes that's a good thing. I just need to slow down and think about what you're doing anyhow. Let's 
some ways it's probably important. Giving up the ghost is this that cipher? This is not necessarily cipher. This is a fallen angel for sure. And he is very cool. He's a commission for uh, AMP services. He's pretty sweet. be pretty legit if he was uh, the gentleman that commissioned this has uh, models out to a lot of artists uh, trying to get a fun project together and if I was the one that got cypher that would be that would be pretty cool but But I don't know what their intent is for him. If he's just a librarian or what. Cypher's got to be one of the coolest heroes in any game. Giving up the ghost says, Well, it is so hard to find good miniature painters. <laughs> yeah, everybody... It's a fun hobby, though. People have a lot of fun painting them and want to do work. These skulls have been bugging me because they're so rough. And... You know, I was just layering in some colors on them, and then I, I left them to work on other things. And I think I just detailed too much of the model around them. And they just started to look real, real rough as time went on. One of those principles where you've just detailed everything too much, and now the things that you haven't spent the time on are looking a little, little rough. Uh, giving up the ghost says most just slab on the paint too thick and obscure all the details and suck the highlight and suck at highlighting stuff. Well, I, I struggle with the highlights as well. But um, if you like, I have, I have Instagram links below. You can take a look at the stuff I work on generally if you haven't already. I usually use Instagram for works in progress, but I've been encouraged to post my finished stuff more more lately so we'll see how that goes I suppose we should have him better on camera Just trying to layer in more and more of this cream color for the skull. Eventually we'll get to a brighter highlight, but we'll see how it goes. Playing it all by ear, you know. This skull is super important. They're all super important. I think this model is far more complex than I gave it credit for when it came. Make sure we're picking out all these details down here. And along this little, little nose, this little teeth. I know blending like this isn't the most appealing technique to get into, but it's super important. I think we can also use some of this. Where did it go? There we go.
but yeah, giving up the ghost. I think sometimes with the uh, slather and a highlight on, it's like there's certain techniques that are kind of sexy to do, like finishing techniques, and everybody wants to get to those, and they don't want to take the time to, to build a good foundation of paint beneath it. I think that happens a lot. Highlighting's hard, knowing where to place a highlight, knowing how volumes work, and uh, just learning how to anticipate what light would do to a given miniature with a, you know, a made-up light source is, it's complicated. I think we all get better at it each time we paint a miniature. I do like the idea of changing up this this pistol grip into something darker though. I don't know. Yeah, we'll go orange. We'll go we'll go orange. <coughs> Let's do this. Nice purpley brown could look nice as a as a rusted effect on the gun in general. Just gonna try to blend these up on my palette ahead of time. sure all right let's see what we can accomplish here so just laying that color down I'm not like I just rinse the excess off but not like cleaning my brush or anything grab our little highlight tone and then wet blend this highlight on we'll let that dry it's a nice little transition there let's see about the other side this is our darker side you can see we've got the gun quite a bit darker over here I think that that's okay just to crudely show where perhaps it would be more worn towards the bottom as his grip has I don't know where the grip would happen and as it dries we can take another coat of this but a little bit more deliberately King Beard says you killed that plasma on the gun so bright. Well, thank you. Keeping it keeping it contrasted, you know.
I don't think we're going to punch the, the vibrancy up as much on the inside. But we will still push the contrast, <coughs> excuse me, a wee bit more. On each little bit there. Yeah, I want it to be very subtle. I shouldn't be interesting to look in there. We'll keep it, we'll keep it interesting out here. In this way, we can really build up this nice orangey brown. And truly, all I'm doing right now is we're not highlighting this at all, it's just that same orange color, but. We're just painting it again and again. Brogami says contrast style. Contrast thy life. Yeah. A little bit like that. Let me just. One more coat. kind of crazy how it looks like it's being highlighted when all you're doing is achieving full saturation on your color. Gonna glaze back some of that purple tone, that same purpley rust we were working with before. dry up see what we get perhaps it'll get a little black mixed into it I think a little black might do the job desaturate a little bit yeah increase that contrast a wee bit Try one more coat of this down here in the in the recesses to kind of get things to to jump apart for us.
then we're going to use an actual highlight color. Make sure I got most of the paint off the brush. most exciting thing but it is it is complicated for me so <laughs> bear with my, uh, my expression as I try to slate in all these colors a little bit here just again insisting on additional saturation in different areas so we're not adding any more brightness here we're just in certain areas fully saturating this highlight you see Bixie good morning sir well morning back at you how are you today On this, the 1st of May. I think that's a pretty sweet fade we got there. On that ombre. That's what's up. Let's take one more load of our dark mixture, maybe a little bit more black to it. Let's have a look on the thumb here, what we have. Pretty darn dark. Let's hit these recesses one more time. When you get your bright highlights next to your dark shadows, you get nice contrast and everything jumps off. And I think that's what's up. I think that's what we're talking about. So in that same way, we start taking that highlight color. Let's take it a little bit brighter. Let's come back to our leather strap here from the other day. going to take these in a few areas and we're going to take that brightness just to the next level. Really jump it off. The interesting thing about this, this is mostly just a something I was trying to see how it would work out. And I think it reads pretty well with the rest of the colors.
get a little bit of extra highlighting it goes a long way I'll glaze this back one more time and it'll take the edge off in some ways but in others I think it'll remain This was our initial color, I think. Yeah, so we'll just take that that dark tone that we have. Actually, no, we didn't. We used a red wash. It was almost a big mistake. That would have been terrible. Check our dilution real quick. Yeah, not too, not too great. Rid some of this excess. And where are we? Just applying an even glaze of this over top of the whole strap all these areas up here on the on the strap or the the grip bring some of that tone together get back to these skulls Trying to bring more, more vibrancy to the top of them, more contrast, but it's hard because the sculpt is a little soft. So it's hard to find the detail in, in some ways. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> we'll work on these ones. He's got a little more detail for me to go on. trying to bring in some some darkness into the temple so that I can then in some way feather it out so we get some contrast between a light and a shadow which is weird to do Highlight as we work our way up and out. See up here, even though there's not a whole lot of definition sculpted, we can make pretend in some ways just by just by doing that. It's I 
how we're coming together as a piece. I know we spent the majority of our time together like super cropped in there, but some of these things just maybe take a little bit of time. I don't, I don't know. But I think you know sometimes you just gotta pan out a little bit and have a look at a greater distance see how the things compose on the whole as opposed to as one aspect like do they tie together in harmony together I need to really decide what I want to do with this little filigree down here on the shoulder pad I don't know what I want to see happen there it's just complicated in and of itself at least cover this up here Motor City Ray says woot woot happy Friday good morning Ray how are you doing Contrast here. Ray, what do you think about this hand together? In a pretty good place, I hope. I, I'm really liking the, the contrast that's given. And once I glaze it back, I, I know we'll get even more. Being sieged by a kitten. Versus a hand is magical. Yeah, we're hoping. We're hoping. We got Dreitcha herself is gonna get a bit of a she's also purple, but she's gonna be different than the than the hands. I think I can pull off a tonal difference. Little girl cat. You can't head but my elbow, darling. Well, yes she can. Turns out, yes, she can head but my elbow. She says it's breakfast time. The stream better not run late. <laughs> Which is funny. No, these, these big paws, come here. Be good. <laughs> I got a cat attack. Babies, you can't. You can't bite the paintbrush. No. She was very excited at like five ten. She's like, "Oh, we're up. Guess it's time to eat." Like, no. It's not what time it is. But it's been like this ever since. What are you doing? Stop biting them. Let's see here. Let's get a little bit of this dark tone. No, no. Zoom back in for this, but let's see. Just 
snap a little bit of this in here. See how that goes. Establish a shadow. Let me, let me crop back in. So we're here on this purity seal. Just working on the other sides of them, trying to establish a nice contrast shadow. Little girl cat. Don't think they want to see the back of your head. Settle. We got like five more minutes, maybe. Just using some stippling to kind of highlight without having it be super uniform or slathered on. I think that's also important. Kalini, oh, Motor City Ray! Look out! Snuffle says your cat would look sick with edge highlights and glazing. Look, baby girl cat doesn't like that. Motor City Ray gifting out. 10 subscriptions. Kalini, de develop with this name. We got Gloom and Bolters for Snuffleus. We got Allstare, Alistair. We got Ty Grainer. We got Cheeky Desk Nurgling. We got Ren No Ribs. We got Nakar Nakaruki and Taro. Welcome to, uh, to the stream. Enjoy those subs thank ray for all the for the gifts i see ray with the a our hype conductor himself be a sleep ray I don't know there's this little dot here and I think the the sculpt is pitted racist I don't know racist I don't know Ren No Ribs' is back says, not, not on for much longer, I assume, but I came in to thank for the sub. Well, thank you, Ren. Hopping in, letting Ray know what's up. George Sukuzidis, well, hello, my friend, he says. Well, good morning, George. Coming out of the lurk. We've been attacked by a cat here. Very persistent. She usually goes for my, my paint wash cup, but today she's been nibbling on my paintbrushes. What's that about? My favorite thing when she gets this way about, about food is that I'm going to get out there and she'll still have some kibble from yesterday and she probably won't even be hungry. She'll just want to know that it's in her dish. Huh. Alright, little girl. 
I'm gonna sit you down while we wrap this up. Yeah, go ahead. So today we made some progress on Dreitzer's talons. We got some additional detail on the strap, the pump, on the on the I don't know, pistol grip, whatever you want to call it. Skulls. We talked highlight and shadows with the D and D painter, dungeon master painter. We talked flesh tones with Gregorsman. Motor City Ray and George have a thing going on. Thank you again, Ray. That is always incredible when you do things like that. Um, let's see who all is online today. I do not see the devilishly handsome. Damn it, Daniel. Where's he at, Ray? It's Friday. It's Friday. I get to go see Daniel today. I don't know what to say to that. You sleeping in, maybe? Who should we raid instead? Unless he's getting on, and then you know, I'll hang back a few minutes. We've got... I think he said Monday. I know. Okay. Daniel's PC restores take several days longer than I expected them <laughs> to take. Um, that's just me. All right. So we've got Brush for Hire. We've got Tyrannic Veteran. We've got Metal Headed Minis. And a bunch of fresh faces. I don't have time to hang out with somebody new, I don't believe. It's already 7.35. We think, Ray, Tyrannic. We got... Yeah, I, don't, I haven't read Tyrannic in a long time. Badger? We can raid the badge. Moon squid's on. Let's go raid Glorious Badger. All right. You're going to be in good hands with the Glorious one. For now, we're going to leave for the weekend. Can't go, Maddie. She's too pretty to look into her eyes. That's true. Can never focus in her channel. Oh yeah. Well, if you can look, oh, goodness, we just threw the mouse. On the scheme of things, on my desk that could fall, we'll let the mouse go. Uh, trying to look directly into the badger's hair. Okay, you get lost in there for hours. For now, I don't know that I'm going to be on over the weekend. There's a chance. Sunday. There's a chance. But I'll put it up in the uh, in the Discord. If it's going to happen, I'll put it out on social perhaps. Get some paint done over the weekend. For now, though, it's Friday. Soon will be Saturday then, Saturday, then Sunday. Can't get the beer. Yep, we'll see it work, sir. Ray says, Chris, hope you have an amazing day, Ray. You have a better one. Thank you so much. Everybody, enjoy your weekend. And we will see you, uh, hopefully, Sunday, but definitely Monday.